Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the three lines of defense that are part of your immune system. So remember your immune system is your body's system that is there in order to protect you and keep you healthy and safe against outside invaders such as bacteria, viruses, uh, fungus, parasites, uh, anything that could hurt or damage your cells and your body. So before we actually get into the actual three lines of defense, it's important to remember that there's two main categories of defenses. You have innate immunity, which include non-specific defenses, and then you have acquired immunity, which involves specific defenses. So if we take first a look at the innate immunity, when we say that innate immunity is non-specific, has non-specific defenses, we're saying that all of these things listed here, they protect you against anything and everything. It doesn't matter what kind of bacteria or virus you're looking at, all of the stuff in your non-specific defenses will protect you against anything and everything. Not a specific type of bacteria or virus, but anything and everything. Whereas with your acquired immunity, you have specific defenses. These specific defenses are usually cells or proteins, so you have T cells, B cells, and antibodies. And these specific defenses, you actually make specific T cells, specific B cells, and specific antibodies that will attack only a certain type of bacteria or virus. And those cells that are made specially for that bacteria or virus will only attack that bacteria or virus. If another bacteria or virus comes along, um, they usually won't attack that one. So it's very specific to a certain bacteria or virus. So keeping that in mind, your innate immunity, which is non-specific defenses, and your acquired immunity, which is specific against certain bacteria and viruses, um, we take a look at the three lines of defense. So the first line of defense is all about keeping stuff out of your body. If these foreign invaders, these bacteria, these viruses, if they can't get into your body, then they can't hurt you. So your first line of defense is designed to either keep them out in general, or to keep them from actually getting to your cells. Because once bacteria and viruses get to your cells, that's when they can really do the harm. So first line of defense, these are non-specific. They protect you against anything and everything. And they are physical barriers. Keep the bacteria and viruses out. So your number one first line of defense is your skin. Skin covers the outside of our body, and it's like a protective wall around a castle. It's going to prevent bacteria and viruses from getting in. Even the smallest virus can't get through the multi-layers of our skin, as long as your skin is nice and healthy. So that's going to keep bacteria and viruses out. Now, unfortunately, we have openings in the skin. Um, our eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and reproductive areas um, provide openings that allow bacteria and viruses to get in. So we often have things that protect us, such as mucus in those areas. So mucus is a sticky substance, substance that traps the bacteria and viruses. Um, we find them in our nose and also our reproductive tract as well. Um, not reproductive, our respiratory tract as well. Um, so our respiratory tract um, leads down to our lungs and they can be very sensitive. We don't want those to get infected. So we have mucus that lines the pathway down into our lungs and many bacteria and virus that we may inhale that get in that far will get trapped in that mucus and not go any further. So again, either prevent them from getting into the body in general or keep them away from your cells. If they're trapped in that mucus, they can't do harm. And then you have things like cilia. So these are cilia. These are tiny microscopic hairs on cells that line your respiratory tract. And these cells basically act like little brooms or sweepers that are going to sweep the mucus that have bacteria and viruses trapped in it up out of your trachea down into your esophagus where you can swallow it and the acids of your stomach can kill anything that's trapped in that mucus. Second line of defense. So the second line of defense, if something gets past your first line of defense, then your second line of defense takes over. Your second line of defense is also non-specific. So the, everything I'm going to talk about now, all of these things protect you against anything and everything, not a certain bacteria or virus. So your second line of defense is going to be used to slow things down or stop them. The goal is really to stop things, um, but definitely to slow things down. So slow things down or altogether stop a bacteria or virus. So here we have one part of our second line of defense, which is uh, inflammatory response. Inflammatory response happens uh, when you get a break in the skin. And when that happens, that actually causes certain types of cells, like mast cells here and macrophages, to release certain chemicals. Uh, the mast cells release histamines, and those histamines are going to actually help the blood vessels in the surrounding area to dilate. When blood vessels dilate, so you see here 
blood vessel has dilated, it's become larger and more engorged with blood. It creates heat in the area, and a lot of bacteria and viruses can't survive in that heat. And as a result of that, they can die. So sometimes they have to be in a certain range in order to survive, so that can actually kill them. And then it also allows many of your other cells that are going to come along and eat the bacteria and viruses that are invading in that area. Um, they'll come along and they can squeeze through the blood vessels easier when they're dilated. So they can squeeze through, go in and do their job and destroy um, any bacteria or virus that is invading. Next part of your second line of defense is the actual cells that do the eating. These are called phagocytes. So phagocytes, they come along and they eat bacteria and viruses. So they literally engulf them. When they take them inside, they use enzymes to break them apart. And if they've broken apart, they can't do any harm to your body. So the two main types of cells that do the eating are called neutrophils and macrophages. So neutrophils and macrophages, it's their job to go around and eat and then use enzymes to destroy bacteria and viruses. Then you have natural killer cells. These guys go around and again, you want to slow things down. So if a virus has already infected a cell, you want to slow it down. You don't want it to keep on spreading from cell to cell. Um, so natural killer cells will find cells of your own body that have been infected and kill your own body cells to make sure that they can't spread the virus. Um, so it goes through and kills cells that have been infected and also looks for cancer cells. So it'll also go through and look for cancer cells, cells of your own cells that have become cancerous and destroy them. Next part of our second line of defense here is fever. Um, so fever, a lot of people think fevers are bad, but fevers are actually one of your body's defense systems. And like I said with the inflammatory response, when you get a fever, that raise in temperature is too much for some bacteria and viruses. And it can actually uh, kill some bacteria or destroy some viruses uh, or allow them not to reproduce. So a fever is actually a good thing. To a certain extent. If you have a really high fever for an extended period of time, that's a bad thing. Um, but if you just have a normal fever, that is a sign that your body's trying to fight something off. You have something that's invaded your body and you're trying to protect yourself against it. So kills those bacteria and viruses. Last thing for the second line of defense, um, again, we're trying to slow things down. So if a virus did get in, got past that first line of defense, the barriers, now uh, we want to slow them down. So there are things called interferons. Um, these are really interesting and pretty cool. These interferons are released. These are chemicals, little chemical molecules that get released by cells that are already infected. So a cell that has been infected by a virus will sometimes release these interferons. These interferons are like messages to the surrounding cells telling the surrounding cells that there's a virus and you don't want to get infected. So when the interferons get to those other cells, it causes those cells to change what they're doing for a short period of time. Um, so uh, they slow down protein synthesis. They make uh, molecules, uh, enzymes that are going to break down mRNA, which a lot of viruses carry. Um, so it gets those surrounding cells, says, hey, get ready. You might get infected. And as a result of that, when, if a virus does get to those cells, um, they protect themselves less likely to be fully infected and more likely to destroy the virus. All right, so our three lines of defense. You have your barriers. That's the first line of defense. Then you have your second line of defense, stop or slow things down. And then finally, if something breaks through all of these, so it breaks through the barriers, first line of defense, it breaks through the second line of defense, slow stop and stop things down, stop and slow things down. Then you get to your third line of defense. You do not want anything to break through this line of defense because if something breaks through this, that means death. Um, so you want this third line of defense to hold strong and true. So when you look at all these, the first two lines of defense are part of your innate immunity. They're nonspecific. So the barriers and stop slow things down, they protect you against anything and everything, not a specific bacteria or virus. Then you get into your acquired um, immunity, which is the third step. So this is specific. You're going to make certain cells and proteins that are going to specifically attack certain bacteria and viruses.